it might not always be, you know, Bacon or doing this. It might be in no way just a response. So, again, I, I read this book and it just, boom, it, 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 it caught me. Um, so, and hopefully, you know, for some of you, that this, this relates as well and, you can, and it can help you. Because in that response, you see some people, right? They go through traffic, they're angry. They come home, they're angry. This, like, this is wrong. And, and this political party is wrong. And now the political party rules that they want to, and it's also wrong. And, like, everything is always wrong and wrong and wrong. But what is another way of doing that? So you have to tell me over and over and over again. So coming home for me, what does that mean? This is my family. These are our four kids. The youngest two are obviously adopted. Um, we adopted them at birth. I'm super proud of them, as I am of my two older ones. And my daughter, that is one of the things that you accomplish in life. And yes, I'm starting to make a lot of money. And I bought my, my Mercedes. And I bought a Maserati. And I bought a new car. Oh my god, I'm so happy. It lasts for about three months. And this it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. My daughter, uh, Julia, won uh, two weeks ago in Monmouth County. They have most parents student work. She is 18. She's going to go to Sacred Heart. Uh, as a D1 track and field student, and she is the, she, she got selected as the most caring student in her school. Now, I didn't care about her grade, she's got a great grade, but she took care of it. She's the link between the Mexican kids, the African American kids, the white kids. She's the link, she helps everybody. She went to Ghana to, for three years in a row the whole summer to help build the uh, latrines in villages. I'm super proud of that. That's what I'm super proud of. So that's, you know, if you want to talk about Alice Kennedy, that's what I do now. Play soccer, focus on my kids. Uh, Lucas, you know, awesome kid. Laura, awesome. Uh, my oldest son is studying in the Netherlands right now. That's what we do right now. This is what we do a lot too. We love to travel. But when we do, you'll be surprised how many rich people in Africa. By the way, I was cleaning offices when I went to school. And I hate it to this day if people in my company go to Staplet and then just drop it on the floor and went. Want to pick that up? And they're like, I'm like, I used to do that. And it sucks because these saints get stuck in the car so they have to pull them up. And I hate that. I know the cleaning lady in my company. I know her. I know who she is. I know the kids. I know uh, the guy who opens the door. We always have people coming in. If you come with a cab driver, I will talk to the cab driver. And Sappos, by the way, does the same. They, they have the cab driver pick up the airport in Las Vegas. I start reading that, I'm like, I'm going to do that too. And if you don't talk to the cab driver, you, you treat him as a second-hand citizen, you come to the door at Zappos and the CEO asks, like, hey, who are you talking to? How was this? I didn't say a word. He goes, take him right back to the airport. You go right back. I mean, I've been here. So that is awesome. Those are the soft skills that people are looking for right now in the workforce. So we went to Cambodia and Vietnam three weeks ago, my wife and I, um, which by the way was awesome. I went to a local, uh, I always go to a local store and buy all the school supplies that I can, do the whole rental car in the front, and we pass it out. That's now my house. And I know it sounds sappy and stuff, but trust me, helping other people is the best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. So here, here's me. Look, I'm a little taller than. <laughs> but by the way, I'm handing out crayons and pencil sharpeners. I challenge you to go to the U.S. because the kids here get crayons at dinner, they throw them out like that. These kids are fighting over their crayons and over pencil sharpers. And the sad part was that our guy, that's a, I told our guy, go out where there's no other tourists. I want to be where, where, where local people live. And then first of all, he thought we had four heads. Why? I'm like, I just want to go out there. And we just stopped on the side of the road. This was not planned or anything. Where the kids went to school, started handing it out, they thought it was the biggest thing in the world. That's how easy it is to have. So, um, you guys are going to say, like, when you're young, you're like, yeah, that's your life. But I'm going, boom, straight line up. Right? Or you're saying, Simon, I'm here. I'm never amount to anything. I'll just be steady. I'm going to give you gold. Or there's other people who think that you know, life is one big challenge. It's not going to go down. All right? But real life, and the only people in the room know this, there are only two or three stories. But they go on the spheres that people have never lived them before. Right? Real life is this. All the people in the room know this. Know this. You're really happy. Your kids are good. Boom, they get into an accident. Boom, 
dad's got to go pick me up, and I'm in the drug house somewhere, and I'm going through a couple disasters up and down is what life is. Now, how do you deal with the bottoms there? Is what I'm hopefully giving you some guidance on. That you don't choose anger and don't choose anything. There's a better way to deal with that. But this is real life. This is what it is. It's not just one big, crazy, nice story. And it's not that people achieve their wealth and then they're all happy and live happily after after. You can just know how to deal with the challenges in life without getting angry too much. All right. What to watch out for a couple of slides and then I'll try to shorten it a little bit because I know we're running into time. Um, what to watch out for for the seekers. And what I mean by that, the path less traveled, I took the path less traveled, is you can do you can do your thing and you can be old, still gossip about your friends and still, you know, don't grow, you know, don't become a mature person. And by the way, I'm too grateful when they pass that water and when she said go alone, that's what it means to be mature. When you're always together, you're not mature. You have to stand on your own two feet. So that's why she told her brother, hey, you got to do this fast as well. Alone. Water also ensures baptism. You're, they use the water. So that's what I'm so grateful to do. You pass the water, you come back home. So for those seekers amongst you that you know, would like that, know that a couple of things. Everything is dumbed down and tied up. Everything is. And it kills or it teaches the exact opposite of what you try to accomplish. Now, I gave you young folks an example because I used the example they didn't even know what it was. So, High School Musical, I've got to see it. Have you seen it? <laughs> you haven't seen High School Musical? <laughs> <laughs> you have seen High School Musical. Most of you have? You know Sunny Side? Yeah, right? What do you think it's based on? <laughs> no, what's the original story of High School Musical? Anybody? High School Musical, what's it based on? What story? Which is so sad. It almost leads to the exact opposite. Bang? No. One more, come on. High School Musical, what's it based on? Green? Green? No. Romeo and Juliet. And the saddest part about Romeo and Juliet is that that is the saddest love story in the world. If you read that, that is such a sad but beautiful story. And what do they make that into? The basketball kid who goes with the girl, oh, wow, oh, it's this, and it's going to come to pieces the exact opposite of what the story was about. In the real story, she takes a tablet to go home conscious for two, three days. So she can escape and tells her helper to tell her lover Romeo that they can meet somewhere else, live somewhere else. You know that if you're pregnant of a boy, you cannot go home and tell your parents. That still happens today. That's what happened in the story. She married the guy. She couldn't marry him. But she they got keys right now, though. Yeah. They just that's drive him over. Exactly. He's going over now. They go through because that's, that's exactly the story. They, 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 they make a mistake, right? Uh, which they call mo young mommy jail, right? Because you're 16, you have a kid, where are you going to go? How are you going to go through school? And they, and, and, right. and I started talking to people, I had no idea, but that's what it is. For Romeo and Juliet, the original story, she's unconscious, he sees her, he drinks poison, he dies too, she wakes up, sees him dead, stabs, him, stabs herself with, her, with, it, with his knife, bleeds to death. Oh. That's a beautiful story. And he turns into ice cream. <laughs> you know what's crazy? It's the saddest, the, the, purpose, the saddest love story. Would you die? Would you die to something? Really die when you're 20? Most of us would say, heck no. But they did, because they were so in love with each other. That was the one of them. Now, what did they make it into? High School Musical. That's it. <laughs> All right. Rapunzel. Did you know the original story? Rapunzel, the Disney story. Do you know originally why the mother? Why would you lock up a girl when she's 12 in the tower? To protect her from what? Her hair is so long. You know, her hair is so long. You know what? The farmer ladies in Europe, they never had long hair because they had to work on the farm. You know what it meant when you had long hair in Europe in the Middle Ages? Loose women. These were the ladies who hung out around the castles and they, you know, stuff. What? And so this is what the ladies So when this lady, when this young girl was 12, reaching puberty and started to get long hair, lock her up in the tower. You see that to this day. Mom and dad say, you're not going out. I'm putting you right here in my tower. 
No one's coming. And you know in the original, the original story, why the mom and dad, why the mother found out that she saw a lot of boys? Listen here, I want you to look here. That's the original fairy tale, not the dream of Disney story. You know what? Why do you think the mother knew that the boy would be this? Hmm? For what? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Her clothes started to get a little tight. Oh, she was pregnant. That's the original fairy tale. And she got twins. She goes out into the woods. This guy climbs up the tower, sees the mother, starts fighting her, throws himself out of the tower, breaks his eyes in the prickly bushes, is blind, also is, is lost in the woods for years, scrambling around. Then he hears her voice and he follows her. She starts crying to see him all blind after years old, dilapidated. She's living with twins. She's not making any ends meet. It's sad. She can't make ends meet. She's crying over him. Her tears fall on his eyes, and he can see again and live that way around. But let me tell you one thing. How many mothers do you see living here that have, that have kids all by themselves and are wandering around in the woods trying to make ends meet? And where are the daddies? Where are the daddies at? Who's in there? And they all being cool and stuff, but at night they're all wondering, like, oh my God, what did I do? They are blind and they're wandering through the woods. And with his eyes that were so lustful that he impregnated a teenage girl. That was the stuff that didn't work anymore. They, they punished him for not seeing that. So he couldn't see anymore. Only true love made him see again. That's the beauty of those fairy tales. Let me ask you a question. So sure, when he climbed up in her window, he got her pregnant that same night. He gave visit her in the tower when the mother was not there. And they had a little I, room I room. got you. Okay. I got you. <laughs> Come afterwards and tell you the whole story. I got you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, I'll, do, I'll do one more and then we'll, uh, then we'll open up for questions. Um, be inquisitive, know your stuff. See this guy? Is there anything wrong with this picture? No, you were saying. Get a brain to spill. What's a moron? I love these guys every single day. I love these guys. Hey guys, you know how many people I ask when my travels in the US, right? I love talking to you. My Lord, ignorance is nothing funny to do. <laughs> I ask you, you love your country, right? You say, I love it. I got to bleed American. Would you say, like, I love cars, right? Or, or, or I love anything. Would you say you would know a lot about the subject that you love? He goes, I love you. Of course, I know everything about you guys. Good. How many people live in that great country of yours? <laughs> <laughs> What did you yeah, see? Yeah. You're being smart ass trying to answer questions. <laughs> when you said you like the US, I just asked a question about the subject you like so much. And let me ask you here, how many people live in the US? Who would say 100 million? Let's go on. 100 million. 222 million. Oh, oh, we got there. Back, back, back. Oh, and then you get a lot Exactly. All right. Hey, did you, by the way, know that Jesus wasn't born in December, but they took that date in December oh, because it was the pagans? That was the, the shortest day of the year, and it was a day of rebirth. And the Pope wrote a book about it? Nope, we don't know that. And here's my dad, and by the way, my dad is one of the people that sadly, two years ago, he got ALS, which I couldn't believe. The guy's fucking challenging. He died for several months, so I miss him every day. This is one of the reasons that I'm doing these speeches. He always told me this. My mother was very religious. He was less religious, and he always whispered in the back, Simon, all these other kids, all my other brothers and sisters I want to fight. Trust the ones who are looking for the truth. Distrust the ones who have found the truth. That's all he said. And for years, I didn't get it. And the other thing he said, parenting is mostly not saying stuff, which I really didn't get. <laughs> and now I totally get it with my teenage daughter. But trust me, right? It's mostly not saying stuff. But trust me, the she walks in and like, you don't even know what my favorite color is, Dad. So, what's my favorite color? Right? But you're better off saying no. Trust the ones who are looking for the truth, distrust the ones who are looking for the truth. So instead of you guys, so you can watch CNN all you want, or Fox News, or whatever, all them their shows, this is what I do now. We don't watch television in my household during the week. 
know what we do at night? What? Don't get what? No television. How long are not going to hit You might have to talk to each other. You might have to read a fairy tale. That's really true. You might meditate with the kids at night. You might want to play a game of Uno. You might take five or risk or really have dinner together. We put our phones away, we have dinner together. And you know what many friends of my 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 17-year-old come into our house and go, you know, your dad's a you know, your dad's crazy. They come in the first five minutes, first of all, it's real food and vegetables they've never seen before. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you guys are crazy. But then I talk to them. I'm like, who are you, Justin? What do you want to be in your life? And he goes, You're the only parent that's ever talked to me. <laughs> and then they come back and then they play games and they think it's stupid to play Uno Bones, it's stupid to card games, but then they come back. Well, I need to watch my news, don't sell. There you go, there you go. Right? Turn off all the news. Read a book. The Moth, if I could suggest anything to you, Radio Hour. It's a, it's a podcast, it's on a podcast, it's anything. I do nothing but when I drive in the car and listen to The Moth. Unbelievable stories, beautiful stories, real life stories. The Moth. And uh, the, the stores are amazing. You just, you know, I could go into that for half an hour. It's beautiful. All right. Um, I guess I'll open it up for questions. I'll give you one more. This, the hidden signs, and then we'll open up for questions. On our dollar bill is written a lot of hidden signs, because a lot of stuff is hidden from, from most people. And what I mean by that, a lot of wisdom is hidden, because they only want the people who are really looking for the message. But on our dollar bill, you can look it up. You see a good dollar here. Good. Look it up. You see this pyramid, right? And I just want to. Oh, I didn't fill it. Are they? There you go. All right. So what, what does that mean, by the way? I'm going to talk this. Anybody? It's on the dollar bill. They write it right there. Ever seen or something like that? He, it's shine upon our accomplishments, achievements. It's not he, but shining upon our accomplishments. And there's a, a pyramid. And behind that, see the desert? And in front of it is green grass. And then this, that's new world order. Those are those worlds. New world order. And that means, and there's a pyramid, and the Almighty Eye is on top. And that pyramid then, that we would find, find this country on religious freedom. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, Christian, because you know what? If you follow every religion, and I'm really into like rereading these books and mythology, if you follow all of them, at the end they're all the same. Which would sound crazy, but it's true. And you get the Almighty Eye. And only when you're on top can you see all four sides of the pyramid. But when you go across that, and when you realize that you build a country based upon that, you get to the green acres here in front of it, instead of the desert that was there behind it. And that to me is the saddest thing to see that, that we've come in full circle now, what we're doing right now. Is they put it on a dollar bill, that we're founded on that, and we're just now, just, the history repeats itself over and over again. And then here, watch this. 13 states, huh? letters in Anamakopkis, 13. Steps on the pyramid, 13 steps. If you add the Roman numerical numbers, they're nine. Right? But the country was founded in 1776. Those are four letters, right? You add the four Romans with the numerical, and you have 13 letters of that. So you have 12 apostles of Jesus, 13. 13 is the number of rebirth. They played that up in the dollar bill everywhere that they could, including on this one. Now the eagle, we talked about the lady who was still dancing and still clinging on to, to happiness and beauty, beauty, or a guy clinging on to money. You see those guys too, they're married to the fourth wife, and they still think they're cool. When they're in Miami, I see them walking, literally a guy walked into a king with a club with a 25-year-old girl. He's like, I'm cool. You're just sad. You're <laughs> sad beyond sad. And you make her look like a fool, so that's double sad. Right? Those people who cling to earthly desires will burn. The eagle is the exact opposite of that. It's the universal angle of the gods of the sky. That the symbolization of the highest aspirations and he has let go of those earthly desires and, and can grow on something. Now what? He has got laurel leaves, right? He's got 13 leaves. See here, 13. 13 stars. A plurus unum out of many, one. He's got 13 spears. Why is the eagle looking toward the laurel leaves? 
I, I was shocked by the light. I didn't notice either. But why do you think he's looking there? Peaceful. Peaceful, right? Yeah, peaceful. We, as the United States, and I'm an American now, I can say I'm only an American. I don't like that. I don't sound like it, but, but we as a country got founded. We were not going to get involved with everybody else in the world and all their stuff. We were going to focus on peace. We were going to look towards peace. We we're not doing that. That's why he's looking that way. And they said to each other, they're going to forget. I guarantee you they're not going to forget. Because we're the founding fathers. We're going to teach them, right? They said, as from now on, everything's going to be happy. It's going to be fine. And one guy said, let's put it on the dollar bill just to make sure. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and asking you, and we don't know it anymore. Because they don't teach this in schools anymore. Right? We sing the national anthem all the time. It's 40 bands and all that stuff. But nobody teaches you that's right on the dollar bill. The beliefs of the people who founded this great nation and why it went so well and what we're doing with it right now. So, anyway, be, be aware of that at least. Be aware of the fact that there's a lot of hidden signs everywhere. And you can find them, and there are keys, there are, there are glimpses of light that you can grasp for, and they will show you the right way, including on the dollar bill. And there are many more that, that I have, but we'll, we'll go into that another time. All right. Last one is be honest, at least with, you, with yourself, as well as the bar you. And it's totally okay not, you know, why do you lie? I thought it was a stupid question, but it's not. But just think about it. I really try to, and I, you know, I try to go to Buddhist meditation, sort of a kind of bad for meditation, but I'm trying to be better. And it's working better and better. But they ask yourself, why do you lie? Really ask yourself that question. Take some time out of your day to really ask yourself, why am I here? What's my goal in my life? And guess what? It's totally okay to not notice at the start of your life. It's totally fine. It's not so okay to not know that at the end of your life. All right? And with that, I'd like to uh, uh, open it up for any questions. We can also do lunch, and I'm free to ask any questions afterwards, because I think we're running out of time. Well, let's first just give him a hand of applause. Thank you. Thank you. So, do I feel like I can first all this? No. I think I'm like, I, eight, I hope to live till I'm 85. I got a life plan for myself that I, that I adjust every every year or every five years. Um, I've been planning till I'm 85, and I'm about 40% there. What I would like to do is to build our other company a little bit more, um, and then to work with uh, young students in disadvantaged areas to try to help them with the soft skills to teach them more. So no, I'm, I'm about 40% there. Yeah, on the, by the way, in terms of the hard skills, money stuff and stuff, I can retire by the time, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, I can quit working now, which a lot of people also don't understand. I just want to be honest with you. A lot of people don't understand, like, you know, why did you retire? Because what are you going to do? My kids go to school. What am I? I love traveling. What am I going to do? Get an eight-year-old out and go travel the world with us? That's not right. It's not only my life. It's for my family. So that side, I'm fine. But that's not the only part of life that counts anymore. So I don't want to be one of those suckers who just looks at me or looking at me or stupid. So no, I'm, I'm about 40% there. Thank you. Yes. What made me adopt kids is the fact that I personally think that most of the problems in this world are because of overpopulation. In 1950, we were 1 billion. Now we're approaching 8 billion. And if you ever Google that, that graph goes like this. Nothing. Boom. It goes up. I personally thought it was overpopulation. And I personally think that I could love any other child as I can in my child. Um, so then my, my wife had a very good friend that had cancer and wanted to adopt. And they told us a story how they, uh, they tried to get adoption. 
And there were 5,000 families, they said, on a waiting list for adoption. I said, aren't there like a lot of orphans and stuff? So they told us a story, which I think is, is crazy to me, is if you want to adopt a live child, then you wait about three to five years. If you want to adopt an Asian child, it's like about two years. And I said, how about an African American child? They go, if you have an American passport, how many boys do you want to adopt? Because especially African American boys are seen as they're going to end up as, as trouble, you know, nobody wants to adopt them. And so we were drinking with them, and, and she, sadly, she passed seven months later uh, of cancer, age 38. When we were sitting there at night, she was at the end of her life, and she wanted to adopt a kid that she could give to her husband, and we said grace to start with that, and she passed away. We said we're going to adopt, but that's not an easy decision to write this. Oh, yeah, we adopt, and we were drinking wine, and it sounded like a great plan, but easy. Huh? So we, we said, well, we said, let's, let's wait exactly one year and think about that and do it. So we waited a year. To the day, we both looked at each other and we said, let's adopt. We adopt him. We flew him out of the Utah. We adopt him. And right away, I loved him, not because it's my own. And sometimes I even love him more because I always consider the alternative. His mother was from Alabama. And by the way, this story that they always tell you that's on the lady lady, you know, drunk, and you get there. It's totally not true. It was a working lady. She said, in my neighborhood, I live in Alabama, close to uh, Tallahassee. You cannot come there as a white person in the market. I, she was paying like $150 in rent a month. And she said, if it was a girl, I would have kept it. But it's a boy. And as a boy, if he's smart at school, he's a professor, and they, they, they kill him. If he's a bad boy, they go in a gang, he gets killed too. So I have no option. And we were supposed to meet with the mother for 15 minutes as an introductory thing, and it ended up we were laughing at night and just you know the next day crying, laughing all of it. It was very awkward in the beginning, but then it was just awesome. We struck up the bond, and um, and we, we spent the whole next day together with her too. We were talking about everything, so so that's that's what we uh, decided to adopt. And then we said whatever the sex is of the first baby, we didn't want to side boy or girl, but whatever the other. Whatever we adopted first is what we wanted the sex to be opposite of, of, of the first baby. So we first adopted a boy, so we wanted to adopt a girl second, which we did. Uh, that's the story. And I love them, and I hope they're going to do fun. All right, any other questions? All right, sorry. Go ahead. Sir, go ahead. And what are your thoughts? You mentioned Kiana just for yourself. Right. You didn't mention Kiana. You didn't mention Beyonce for some people. Right. So when they when you start a company, right? Most of the time you go in there and they have values. We have corporate values. Or I'm in church and they say, be honest, people. That's what Jesus said. You go into a company. Be honest. We are honest. If I show you on uh, um, gosh, I forget the name now of that company you went Enron. That's the one that was. Enron. They have their corporate values on the front door. Honest, transparency, corporate <laughs> accountability. <Wow. laughs> right? They have a program at the Home Depot where the CEO said everybody that steals from the cash register is going to get fired because these people have no honesty. When he left the company after four years after he took over and ran the company almost into the ground and lost two thirds of its stock price, do you know what he left with? $120 million salary today. Now who's stealing? And that honesty, I don't need nothing like that. You don't need me to tell you to be honest. I never tell my kids to be honest, because sometimes honesty can get you in trouble. Sometimes being quiet is better. I'm not here to tell you to be honest with anybody but yourself. And that's what I found, that's why I'm telling you. So, I don't believe in telling anybody else what to do. I believe just what worked for me, if it works for you, good for you. Some of you are going to think this is crazy. It doesn't relate to me. I'm, I'm just giving out what I think helped me. So, does that answer your question? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? Yes, go ahead. So how did you become a CEO? Was that a result of savings? 
the company after it was falling apart or like oh okay yeah the outfit last week yeah <laughs> oh yeah the corporation has done so how did i become a ceo <laughs> I had nothing, I came from this town, I got myself edu educated, I actually wanted to be a cook or a kindergarten teacher. I love little kids, I love, like they, they relate to me. I go to my kids' school, especially the kindergarten, they, by the way, here they think that guys must be like, I don't know, they, they're like, oh, don't forget the kids, you only get some children on your, I'm like, what is your mom? <laughs> I, I'm on the floor with them laying and playing right away, but, but I knew that they didn't make money, and remember, I want, I just wanted money, so I decided I'm good with numbers. I became a CPA. I, I got my post post master's degree in, in the, uh, auditing and accounts. And I went as far away from chaos as I could. So I was just numbers. They don't lie. They don't go crazy on me. I can control that. I'm good. And then I started working in merger and acquisitions. But my true self, you know, you can't. I'm not an auditor. I, you know, they, they go to a conference and they prefer to read breakfast like this, facing the wall, not talking to anybody. I'm an expert. Half, by the way. The other half, I want to be in numbers. So anyway, I, I, I advised this company and I told them, you know, you should do this and that. And you're just like, you know everything. Why don't you come to the floor? So I said, wow, so much of you don't even yours. And they called back and said, good, but you got to go to Paris. So. And then I just, I kept speaking what I thought was the truth, my truth. Which, by the way, I know now is just how you see the world. The truth is very hard. You know, truth is only in your mind. But they thought that I was, I had very strong opinions and I voiced them and I, I would work day and night to get it done. Don't kid yourself. To become a CEO or to anywhere in the world to move up, there ain't no corners. There's no shortcuts in this world. Absolutely none. I tried to take all of them, <laughs> killed every single time. It's just hard work, 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 work. And you get there. And then once you got it, you got don't be like a dog with a fire truck because they're all barking at the truck. And you get the truck, you're like, I don't know what to do with the truck now. Right? I had it. I'm like, we got to stop prioritizing on 25 things. We got to do only two things right. Because right now it's a grinding economy. Because everywhere is these companies who would only do one or two things right and they kill it. Because nobody do you do trust them. And you're as good as anybody else. When you book your flight, I told you to go fly. You don't care if it's on Google Flights or cheap flights, you believe all of them. Well, older people, we would go like, mm -mm, I don't trust them, I gotta be with a trusted, you know, United or a travel agency. So um, that's how we came to CEO, just hard work and I took the right steps. Yes. Do you honestly consider it a promotion to move to New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. When we got here, I rented an RV, and it has a California license plate. So we knew Shenandoah Valley. This was prior to 9-11. I drove all the way to Florida. We thought Myrtle Beach was an awesome you know, tourism. So we go to Myrtle Beach. I parked that, I, by the way, you come down a 35 feet long RV with a regular driver's license. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll take the largest. That's awesome. <laughs> like, when I went backwards, I go, dude, dude. I'm like, oh my god, I love that truck driver. I love the big steering wheel. So we did that. I parked that right in front of the White House. I was frying eggs right in front of the White House. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. But they would walk into us and they go, where are you from? Oh, you're a long way from home, boy. I was like, because we're in South Carolina, North Carolina. And I'm like, we're not from California. We live in New Jersey. Oh, have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> I go, what was wrong with New Jersey? Oh, you big farms. I'm like, I've not seen a single pig. It's like, the you know what? So they're like, you know, it's dirty, blah, blah, blah. And then we're like, well, we're actually really from the Netherlands. Oh, then I was cool with yes. yeah. <laughs> But we love it here. Like, yes, I consider it a promotion to New Jersey. And wherever I go, I go a lot to San Francisco, New York, and the tech centers, because that's what's the reality of the I tell everybody, probably I'm from the Jersey Shore. A stupid show, it took it away from us. The Jersey Shore is like, I probably tell people I'm from the Jersey Shore. And, you know, I, I, I'm happy with the Jersey Shore. I'm proud of these people. You go in California and you meet people, you have to dress up on a Saturday. You gotta have clean jeans and all this cool stuff. You gotta look cool all the time. You gotta be all, you know, uh, we went out there a couple of times. It's crazy. It's like all of it. They're so called cool with the jeans, but they have all kinds of unwritten rules, which a lot of societies have. Did you know what the unwritten rule is in Jersey? When we on weekend, we dress like, you know, dog and pants and stuff, and I see in the ball or buddy. I loved it. 
We were in the Paris where you have to formally dress on a Sunday afternoon. We have to go to dinner. I have to dress up, tie, suit, tie. The kids have to wear a suit tie. And then I come here to Jersey and I got invited to a barbecue on a Saturday. So we dress up, wear ties, the kids have a tie, and we get there. And I'm in the backyard, you got a basketball. I said, like, Where the hell are you going? I said, we're, we're coming here. He goes, uh, you gotta go back home and change, buddy. We're gonna jump in the pool there. And we drove home and my wife said, I like these kids. <laughs> so there you have it. That's my Jersey story. Okay. All right, well, I have one more question, and then you, I'll, I'll break it. Just, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, but which company are you a CEO of? Uh, Wayside Technology Group. Yeah, the symbol on NASDAQ is WSTG, Wayside Technology Group. Um, We're based in Eatontown. We have offices in Arizona, Toronto, and Amsterdam. Right. Would you be uh, offering internship on seniors or? Yeah, we talked about it. So, so what I do is we, we have, we actually work with All Stars in Newark, and it's inner city kids, and we get them on the train, and they can come work at our company in the summer. Um, but I said I'd be more than happy here too to give. But the only thing is that I want to warn you up front is driving time. A lot of kids are like, "Oh, it would be awesome!" And after an hour and a half drive every day after a week, they're like, "Ooh, that's too much." So it's just driving wise. If we can make that work, yeah, we'd be more than happy to look into it. Another program that we're doing with high schools, but also with universities, is give, uh, give, uh, uh, give people like you a chance to interview for real. Because if you go on your first interview, you don't know if you did right or wrong, and sometimes you can say after five times, why didn't I get that job? Well, there's a couple of easy things that we can fix, and we have to fix. Because if you play basketball the first time, it ain't gonna be so hot. You gotta work at it, and that's the same thing with interviews. So we can fake interviews that help our managers, but also kids who want to come in and young adults who want to come in and train. So we can do that. All right, we'll do one more because I saw a couple of hands more. Anybody, final question? Good to go. Thank you so much. I am back. If you like, if you like the, the speech, I'm going to come back later this year. Tell them to come. I hopefully am, didn't bore you to death with this stuff. Tell them to come. Uh, this is good stuff. We want to help you guys. So thank you. Thank you again.